Hello, this is Frank J. Avella with Awards Daily. Today in our Oscar Legends series, we have an exceptional and prolific actor who has more than successfully navigated work on stage, in film, and on television since the mid-80s. She has won three Emmys, a Golden Globe, and received her only Oscar nomination to date for her acerbic but vulnerable performance in Peter Hedges' Pieces of April. She has given us rich, nuanced characters in films like Far From Heaven, Dogville, The Station Agent, The Dying Gall, The Party, just to name a few. In her latest movie, Monica, she astounds as the ailing mother of a trans woman. It is my delight to welcome Patricia Clarkson. Oh my God, can I marry you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> You're... Most welcome. And I have to say, uh, your list of credits, it's overwhelming. And and yet, what struck me was, as I've been binging your films these last few days, um, re-binging, I should say, I've seen so many of them. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. They've been, I've been, I've, I've, I've been working uh, a lot. So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky, 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 lucky. So um, let's start uh, with your most recent film, Monica. Uh, it's a beautiful performance. Uh, tell me about how you got involved and why you wanted to play Eugenia. Well, I had met Andrea Palotto at a film festival at Marrakesh. I was oh. on the jury that year and um, I just adored him. And, and then we, uh, several years later, um, I get a call that he has a film and he's, uh, cast Trace Lizette as the lead character and do you want to play her mother and um, I got the script I remember my agent Chris Andrews had I sent the script and I I literally said yes that day to the script um, I fell in love with the the beauty uh, the, the the emotional uh, uh, the, the emotional restraint the uh, this the despair uh, despair, elegance, and eloquence, and I just, I, I wanted to work with Trace. I wanted to work. I want. I loved that a, a beautiful transgender actress would be at the center of this film. Finally, um, I knew it was important, and I think I, I wanted to be a part of that. And I, I liked Eugenia. I liked a woman who had to kind of travel through heartbreak and uh, uh, judgment into a beautiful rapprochement at the very end of her life. Um, I'd never quite played someone so close to death really before. I mean, I have in a more fantastical way, but not in this way. And it was challenging, but I, I, I said yes very quickly. It, your performance is a great example, I think, of the power of an actor's expressions. Um, in many ways, it felt like silent screen acting. How, how did you prepare for that? Well, you know, Andrea, you know, it's shot on film. It's shot portrait style. It's very crafted scenes, very specific scenes. But we had very little time. And I had to I had such a beautiful, beautiful emotional connection to Trace from the get-go. From the moment I met her, I saw her across a crowded room at a pre-Emmy party. And I I thought to myself, I, I saw her and I said, oh my God, there's my daughter. And, but I also said, just secretly, I thought, oh my God, she's so gorgeous. And I had to do this dying with no makeup. <laughs> um, but I, I, I loved her. And even though it is fraught at the beginning and distant because I really don't know who she is and I'm really in more pain and, and then I let people know, I think Eugenia is a dignified woman and, and, and afraid to really, really. Uh, and that's what I loved about her too is she's really, really, really at the end of her life and she's trying to hold on so desperately. And uh, I, I, but I had a, a, a beautiful love for Trace from the very beginning and a love of, of Andrea. And then of course I fell in love with the rest of this cast, Adriana Brazza, there's nobody better. 
Josh Close, he's just, he really is like my son, even now. Um, and, uh, you know, Emily, just this beautiful characters that all came together to inform Eugenia, you know, to inform me. And so I, um, I was fortunate to have great, great, great actors around me. Great. They, they were fortunate as well, Patty. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to dive right into your career. You attended Yale School of Drama, graduated yes. shortly thereafter, and you were cast in John Guare's House of Blue Leaves. Yes. Uh, in yes. the role of Corinna Stroller, which I think is one of the funniest characters ever written. Fabulous. And I have a great story about that. So I was out of Yale. I was doing like an off-Broadway play or whatever, and I get a call to go in and audition for this. And I auditioned for the casting director and the, the director and they say, will you come back and, and read for John Guare and the head of Lincoln Center at the time. And I buy a new dress. I put my Southern hair on. I, you know, my big hair, I, I, I walk in, in a brand new blue dress and I give this, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am audition. I get a standing ovation. I didn't get the part. <laughs> But they gave it to Julie Haggerty. But when she left nine months later, after they had just won the Tony, I get a call on my answering machine. Patty, Jerry Zacks, we're going to put you in. We're going to put you in. It's, it, we're, and I was like, we've got $1,000 a week for you. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. <laughs> I saved that message for like two years on my machine. Uh, and... Uh, you know, it was glorious. I, I I was nine months out of Yale starring on Broadway in, well, you know, it's a supporting character, but but it's still such a great character. My whole family came up to see me. It was, you know, that my mom and dad had sacrificed so much for me to go to Yale. And here I was on Broadway. And it was a it was a beautiful moment in my life and in their moment in their lives, and uh, it, it was one I'll never forget. All that I'll always hold close and and dear to my heart. Yeah, it's amazing, and it was an amazing ensemble, and still to date one of the funniest, most incisive plays. Seriously, uh, it's John Guare's. He's just a genius. He's a brilliant and a kind, kind, funny man, and and then. Uh, just as 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 lovely as they come. Yeah. So a few years later, um, Kevin Costner's wife in The Untouchables. Ooh, no, uh, no, no. That was that was that time. No, I that wasn't a few years. It came out maybe a year later. But I, I guess. was in House of Blue Leaves. I met Brian De Palma. I went into audition. The great casting director who's passed recently. And I can't remember his name, and I, I'm going to kick myself about this. He's a beautiful man. Anyway, uh, it'll come to me. And, and um, But he brought me back in to meet Brian De Palma, and Brian De Palma read Elliot. The reader, he, he didn't read. But Brian De Palma read Elliot Ness with me. And then the next day, they said, well, we're going to fly you to Chicago to meet Kevin Costner. And that's how it all started, baby. <laughs> 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 I uh, I want to jump to a film that I uh, it's a glorious film that should be required viewing by everybody living in this country today, and that's a movie called Pharaoh's Army. Oh my God! The, you know, Robbie, that film with the great Chris Cooper, the one and only Chris Cooper. Nobody knew him. I think that he had he had only done a few things, but Robbie and his father built that set, built that house I lived in. They literally, they built that with their own two hands. They built that set. It was such an extraordinary experience in a very specific part of Kentucky. I'll, I'll think of it. Um, it was, we had to really fight the elements. There was a lot of I mean, I almost got washed down a river in the middle of that shooting. Uh, we, we, it, it's a be. I can't believe nobody has ever spoken to me about Pharaoh's Army. I mean, a few, but not in a very long time. People don't realize. 
I think it's just one of the most beautiful films and, and it's worth seeing just to see Chris Cooper. <laughs> oh, well, and the two of you, this was your first lead role and, and yes. it's yes. how about how divided our country was back during the Civil War and we're there again. And we're here again and it was this little tiny, he took the massive scope of the Civil War, Robbie, and he just reduced it to this just sliver of an a, 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 a union a union soldier coming up against you know this confederate woman and her property well her husband fighting uh against the union uh it, it's just it, it is it's so it's so topical <laughs> right now <laughs> people need people need to seek it out yeah, I'll tell everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in 1998, we had Lisa Cholodanko's High oh. Art, Greta, the German lesbian drug addict. <laughs> it, it changed my whole career because I've been playing a lot of these mom, you know, I've been, and I think people thought of me as a certain way, but I would, I always knew I, I, I was a shapeshifter. I was a chameleon and, you know, I'm, I'm all, I'm forever, forever ever ever thankful for lisa choladenko casting me in that it it honestly changed my whole career and it set me on a path i got such beautiful messages from really big people in the industry through my agent selling you know can you tell Patricia Clarkson i love it like kathy bates and people like these beautiful people who loved me in that film and i just was so thankful and i tell this kind of famous story <laughs> I've said it many times, you might have heard it. So my great aunt Patsy, my namesake, my mother took my great aunt Patsy to see High Art in New Orleans. My aunt Patsy was like 80. And my mother calls me the next day and says, Patty, Aunt Patsy wants to talk to you. I said, Oh God, mother, oh God, you took her to see High Art. Oh my God. Okay. And she was like, Patty. If a director told me I had to play a German lesbian heroin addict, well, I would have told that director I can play one of the three. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh. <laughs> I'll never forget that as long as I live. But I was lucky I got to play all three in all their glory. And... Um, I'm forever thankful to Lisa Jolodenko, forever and a day. Yeah. Uh, 2002, Far From Heaven, the great Todd oh, Haynes goodness. film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a tricky piece. And you and mm -hmm. Julianne had this amazing bond. What I loved yeah. about Elle so much was she's such a good friend until dot, dot, dot. But it's interesting. I think people, it's funny. Everybody has that feeling about that ending. But nobody's ever asked me what I thought that ending was. Oh, please tell us, please. No, I mean, people think I'm judging her about the color. I, I never, it's that she didn't tell me her best friend. Oh. That's, you, but people can interpret it however they want. People immediately assume it's racially motivated. Yeah. But do you know how much I loved her and that I was her best friend and she didn't tell me? I love that. And nobody thinks of it that way. Yeah. And I just kind of took the ride because I knew if I tried to, and look, was there maybe a tinge of the racial conflict in me? Possibly, but I'm telling you right now, that scene for me was about, I felt betrayed by her because she didn't tell me. You she know, didn't now, lean into me. now that you're saying that, because I just watched it again a few nights ago. And if you look at me very carefully in that yeah. scene, it is not a scene of hatred. Yes, I give her this look, but it's also a scene. It's also a, a look of, of, of a heart. There's a there's a heartbreak underneath it. Yeah. You know, you know, I have best friends and if they don't tell me about something. I mean, not quite on this level, but, you know, but you can interpret it, you know, I, I, I don't, 
was there probably a touch of of, 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 of the racial of, of the color of the skin in there yes but whatever hmm. you know but I, there's also another element of friendship in there yeah yeah i i actually like that um six feet under brought you two emmys uh what a, what a terrific show what was working with that ensemble like patty i mean w there were days when i was shooting with um uh with Kathy Bates and my sister, the great, my, who plays my sister. Frances Conroy. Fran, Franny, with Franny. So it's fr me, Franny, and Kathy. And they used to call us the three tenors. <laughs> <laughs> they say, get the three tenors to the set. <laughs> Love it. Um, it was a dream come true. It was a, a beautifully, exquisitely crafted part you know i used to get the scene get the scenes and my scenes never changed they never rewrote it. like alan would just write these scenes or whoever uh, some other writer and they would just stay the same wow. they never rewrote sarah because they were so these scenes i i this is not false humility i just had to kind of show up really know the lines well to do them justice because I often had big monologues and big moments and big scenes and I had to do it right mm. you know I had to do it I had to give it its due and that's what was most important night 2003 banner year uh I want to start with what I think is one of the most groundbreaking films ever made and I mean this which is Dogville it, it it's a it's a it's a film that you know re reshaped although my father saw said the funniest thing about it. <laughs> should i tell you yeah please do i would love to hear it <laughs> so my kind of southern but cool father he's very educated but he went to see it in new orleans i don't know that it was his kind of film and he said paddle the next day he was like paddle i think you needed doors <laughs> for anyone who's seen the film that is just brilliant <laughs> anyway, what was working with I had the glory of meeting uh the beautiful nicole kidman on that and I, she was just you know she's a she's again just a powerhouse a beautiful beautiful wonderful actress and i i was thankful to be a part of that so Working with Lars, is he as tyrannical as they say? He's he's rough. He's rough, but you know you gotta you gotta navigate with him. You gotta go down his road, and don't fight it. Just mm -hmm. go down his road, and you're fine. You know, you're fine. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Patty Clarkson performances is the station agent. Um, oh, beautiful film. Oh, Tom McCarthy, Pete, Bobby, Pete, Bobby, Tommy. Three yeah. hot guys. I mean, I, you know, it was a dream to work on that every day. And we had, again, no money, no money, no time, nothing, 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 nothing. I think we had just $500,000. Boom. Wow. And um, it was rough. And, uh, but I had them, these three remarkable men at my side and I, we were shooting in New Jersey off the highway in a holiday and I know no and a Howard Johnson's we stayed in the Howard Johnson's oh my god oh my god there were stains everywhere on every carpet every ounce <laughs> but I kind of, like we knew we were in this kind of CD but there was something kind of fabulous about it and we all had these huge refrigerators in our room and I thought are they here for is, are their bodies stored in there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I I had heard um, that you went head to head with Harvey Weinstein about your um, Oscar placement. Yes. You can tell us about that. Well, you know, it was my first big brush with Harvey. You know, I had done Pieces of April with one of my early mentors, Bingham Ray, who ran October Films, and I I loved him so deeply, and. Um, I miss him till this day, Bingham Ray, a beautiful artistic creative force in our industry. And um, 
he early on put me in supporting on Pieces of April, very early on. And Harvey just was obsessed with me going, which he often did. He would take leading actors and put them in supporting, which I found dishonest. Yep. And um, I was also the leading lady of Station Agent. I yeah. was the, the, the I, that was important to me. I valued that place. I valued that part. I valued my, you know, I valued being the leading lady of this beautiful film opposite these two incredible men. And he was, he made my life a living hell to put me in supporting and I would refused, I refused. And, um, you know, I still pulled out two SAG nominations. You yes, know you that did. I'm in a rare, I'm in a rare category. I got nominated leading and supporting and ensemble. And I remember they asked me to present that SAG. I said, you know what? I think they've got enough of Patricia Clarkson. <laughs> I am not coming out. <laughs> I'm not coming out. <laughs> um, but I, I hold again. I, I, I'm, I'm still so flattered and thankful that. You know, my people, my actors, all that put me in those two categories. And what a, a moment in my life that was. It was tremendous. Mm. I, I, I never, ever took that for granted. I knew how special that was. And I also could say to Harvey, na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> well, which brings us to Pieces of April. And, and what was the awards experience like for you back then? Well, remember, I, I did go to the Oscars, but I, I really won a lot of awards that year and, and, and a lot of critics awards and a, it was exhaust and, you know, National Board of Review and critics and it was, it was a lot, a, a lot, you know, and nominated for many awards. It was, it was overwhelming because mm -hmm. I'd never quite been in that game before. I had had a little recognition um, with high art and I had won the film critics for Far From Heaven, the New York film critic, which is so fancy. And, but I, 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 but I was thankful that I had, you know, I had my head on right. I knew how to just go, you know, to realize that I had to, this little tiny $500,000 film was taking me to the Oscars. Like yeah. I told Joan Rivers on the, uh, on the red carpet that I said, Joan, the jewel, my jewelry, my dress, even my underwear, my fancy underwear, like it all costs more than the film. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I there was another performance where um, you needed to get into the headspace of a woman with a, with a terminal illness. Here she had yes. a wicked sense of humor though. Well, she, but I don't, you know, this was, it's so radically, you know, I, I mean, I would never even think of them in any way, you know, they're so radically different, Eugenia. And, and what was my character's name? And Joy, Joy, ironically. God, how can I forget Joy? <laughs> and it was such a different film you know, it was this comedic, dramatic, you know, it was this dramedy, so to speak. And Peter Hedge's beautiful, brilliant sense of humor and his pathos and his, I mean, it was a dream to shoot that every day. It was a dream and opposite, you know, Oliver Platt and Alison Pill and John Gallagher. And I, you know, just lucky, lucky, lucky. And, um, you know, but Peter's the Peter found a magic in that part, and that's what took me to the Oscars. That's what took me was the magic. Some he found he bottled magic for that part. I just kind of had to show up, and this isn't false humility because I, I I do really think that a part has to be on the page so so often it has to be in front of you. You know, and I just. Uh, was given that gift. 
a couple years, two years later, you were in uh, the Best Picture nominee, um, an extraordinary film, George Clooney's Good Night and Good Luck. Oh, my God. This Shirley, is your life, Patty. Yeah, yes. Okay. Shirley <laughs> Worshba. Oh, my God. Shirley Worshba, baby. Beautiful Shirley Worshba. Um, Did you meet again, her? I get to I get to work with the, the you know, one of the greatest men in Hollywood. Uh, and I say that because... I think we strive to be good in this industry, but George actually lives that. He's a true egalitarian. He's a true believer in cinema and actors and everybody working as one. He treats every single person on that set in the same exact way. I've never seen that before. Yeah. And that will always stay with me. And the, the, the importance of that film, the beauty of that film is a beautiful film. And David Strathairn is just a knockout. And um, going to Venice with them and watching George, you know, you know the, 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 the boy from, um, where, where's his, his uh, villa? Uh, oh, uh, Lake, Lake Como. Cuomo, the boy yeah. from Lake Cuomo, you know, getting his due at the Venice Film Festival. It was just magic, the whole experience from, from beginning to end. It was magic with George. Magic. It's another timely film that you were in. Yes, very. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. And now Monica. Mm, mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, um, same. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, what else? What, what's the next one? Oh, next one's God. Dying Gall, which oh, not enough God. people talk about. You are so amazing in this film, uh, Elaine. What a fascinating character. Can we just character. talk about the white bikini? Can we just <laughs> talk about the white bikini? Okay. <laughs> Who cares about the movie? Let's talk about the white bikini, damn it. Uh, no, I, I, I got to work with Campbell Scott that I was with at the time, art and life coming together. Wow. Um, we were still together at the end of that shooting. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, but he... You know, Campbell remains still one of my favorite actors in this entire industry. He's a stunning actor and he remains a great actor. He's just, you know, look at his genes. I mean, yeah. you know, he's got Colleen and he's got George coming, you know, I mean, the man can act. And, uh, but it was a beautiful experience and, and a beautiful story, a beautiful, just great characters. And it was, it was just in this incredible cast, incredible. Oh my God, Peter! Peter was just to die for in that film. So anyway, I'm just so lucky. Uh, again, um, uh, you went on to make two um, films with Woody Allen, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, yes. and Whatever yes. Works. Yes. Marietta in Whatever Works is this truly it's hilarious creation. Hilarious, hilarious part. And you know, everybody was poo-pooing it because we can't see another movie about an older man and a young woman. Well, but just tune in to see Marietta. It's one of the greatest characters. It, you know, my, my dear, dear, dear friend has a, a, a sister-in-law that watches that movie like once a year just to laugh. Like she'll sometimes say, I'm just going to put Patty on. In, in. And I'm proud of that, that performance because you know, being funny in Woody Allen, you, you gotta, it's hard, it's hard. You know, you, you got, you know, the comic genius watching over you and, you know, we're not gonna get into everything else in the, his life and where it's gone. Uh, let's just talk about uh, the, the, I loved Marietta. I love that character. I love that character. I love that character. From the faint on, remember I faint, come on. Yeah, yeah. From the yeah. faint on. And her arc is- Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. The menage a trois, ending with the menage a trois, baby. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's classic. It's classic comedy. Yeah, it's it classic. just is. It's yep. classic. Uh, then you worked with another genius, Martin Scorsese on Shutter uh, what's Island. What's his name again? What's his name again? <laughs> <laughs> I used to say Scorsese. I spent my life saying, and I'm Italian, so it's really Scorsese, but nobody's going to say Scorsese. that. It's Scorsese. It's yeah. Scorsese. Just call uh, him Marty. Uh, yeah. He's, he's, um, well, that was a, a, a high point in my career, you know, I was working with Woody and Marty at the same time. I mean, I used to pinch myself when I'd wake up. I, I'd be like, oh my God, Patty, hmm. 
because I had to leave whatever works and go shoot Shutter Island and come back. They were simultaneous. Wow. And, um, but Marty is, Marty is a beauty. He, he's a lover, a lover of, 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 of everything cinema. You walk on that set, it's the f- freedom and a, you know, it's, he's so Italian and so, it's so loving and giving and just, you walk on and everything is great. Everything's just, but he wants to get you to that place. Like, ah, you know, he's not going to settle till you're in that, 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 those dark, weird places. But he let me kind of add some things that weren't in the script and he just let me kind of be crazy and weird and fraught and ugly. <laughs> 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 well, you you came in in that one scene in the cave, and honest to God, you Beatrice straighted the shit out of that role. Okay, you know what I mean by that. But that's Marty. Marty realizing that this is kind of a cool moment in the film, like you know, and to think that it was all you know. I mean, but he wanted this moment to be like, fuck, you know. Oh, can I say that on your network? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now we uh, come to House of Cards, which Jane oh, Davis. Oh, Jiminy. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a kick-ass character she was. Amazing. For me to play, because again, playing so many moms, so many dying people, so many fraught people, just to be this kind of intelligent, opaque, brilliant fierce woman you know in a room with robin wright the great robin wright and for one season kevin spacey but and campbell scott again and i just i um frank the great 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 uh, who wrote this the hell out of jane davis that i i i i i watched it just th- through a you know, through a glass darkly because I was just, you know, I, I don't like watching myself. And I, I loved Jane so much. I didn't want to disappoint myself. I loved her. I loved her little high-waisted skirts and the things and the thing and the hair and the purse and her old lady purse and her fum, 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 fum. And I just, I, 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 it was hard to let that character go. I really loved Jane Davis and I'll, I'll, I'll always love Jane Davis, always. Oh, so do your fans, let me tell you. Um, are we come to Sally Potter's The Party, which Ooh. is a, what a fabulous, nasty person April is. Uh, well, my favorite line is uh, she, she turns to Chris and Scott Thomas and she says, if you really want to run this country, then you'll have to do something about your hair. <laughs> which is just, you know, Sally, it's just one of the great lines ever written. Like, and I got to deliver it. I just had to say it. I just had to say it. And Chris and Scott Thomas, you know, is this brilliant, you know, to to work. We shot it in London in this beautiful set that was built. That was all a created house. And again, not a lot of time, not a lot of money, but this just star studded, you know, front to top, you know, front to back, A to Z stars, you know, the great Cherry Jones, Emily Mortimer. I mean, everybody showed up for this film because we all knew there was something amazing about it, something unusual something very sally potter you know what i mean yeah and um i i am thankful i want a biffa for that and i have to tell you i i have some emmys but i prize my biffa it's right by my emmys okay baby (laughs) (laughs) no i'm i'm very thankful for for um being a part of that film and getting to know those people and getting to work really intimately with Kristen Scott Thomas she's she's a really great actress my god yeah I think it's it's one of my favorites of yours as well um thank you thank you uh Sharp Objects Amy Adams HBO (laughs) Adora could not have been easy to play no but I had to love her and not judge her. I had to let her illness be, you know, remember Munchausen, people suffering from Munchausen 
they have no idea they are ill. They have no idea that they are, for lack of a better word, evil. They are, it's all about helping that person come closer to you. They are in desperate need of affirmation every single day of every single moment. I mean, it's a very dark and dreary illness. And um, it, it, one that I, I, had to, I had to love Adora in my own way and want to play her and want to be that and not shy from the brutality of that. And I had, you know, these great actresses, my, you know, alongside me and the one and only Amy Adams that is just, you know, I always have beautiful children. And I said, look at Amy Adams. Oh my God, I always, I mean, I, 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 I just keep playing, you know, uh, it's so flattering. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really had a beautiful journey in particular with Amy Adams on that shoot. And you're always involved in such remarkable ensembles, at, which brings us to She Said. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Movie that did yes. not get enough recognition no, last it didn't. year. It didn't. And, you know, I took this part. It wasn't, a, a few of my scenes were cut in that movie. I'm a little, was a little sad about that, but we can talk honestly. But the beauty of that film, you know, and those girls, I mean, Carrie and Zoe, they are just so top notch. And all of those victims, you know, many of his several, many of well, several of his victims were actresses in our movie, and what a beautiful full, full circle moment! I mean, that film was so important and so so needed to just lay it out for people, just 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 how horrific it was for so many women in this industry. And I wanna say men too, I mean, not physically, but he abused men too. And, you know, the torturous days that people spent in this industry with that man. And I came, you know, head to head with it. I'm lucky it was not physical, but it was, it, I can only imagine what it was like. I, I you know, I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm very thankful and to have played the, you know, the great, you know, investigative editor of the New York Times. I mean, a legendary woman and the reverence that those two reporters, I got to meet her at the premiere in LA and the reverence, that, the way those two reporters look at her was overwhelming to me. How much love they have for Rebecca is, is, a thing to behold. I honestly think it's on the level of an older president's men, and yeah, I, I it, 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 it's it's swift and it's it's got a it, and fragile at the same time. I, you know, I, yeah. I I just loved being a part of that film. Yeah, Patty, can you tell me a little bit about Lily Ledbetter? Well, um, <laughs> I want to save a lot of it, but I'll tell you this. Um, I've played so many unsavory characters, but it's so lovely to play an extraordinary heroic woman. And, and God, I wish I'd been able to <laughs> play a few more heroes in my lifetime. Um, it, 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 it's a privilege. And, and, and I, I'm actually going to see the director tonight at the premiere of Monica and, and, the, the producer, just these first class women, I mean, first class women involved in this film and the women who donated, the women who gave up their savings to donate to this film, the, 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 the women who knew how important it was to tell this story, the fact that it's never been told before is, thank God we're telling it now. So, you know, I age from 40 to 73. Um. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> uh no there's a little de-aging at the, at the top but uh but it's um it takes her through it's a very it's a journey it's a it's a 
from Possum Trot, Alabama, to and Goodyear Tire to on into this political arena. And she was always a woman from Possum Trot, Alabama. Wow. It is I... one of the greatest privileges of my entire life, my career, my everything. My mother can't stop talking about it, that I played Lily Ledbetter. Mm. I got to play Lily Ledbetter. It'll be out, we hope. We'll figure out right timing, maybe the fall. We'll see the timing of it, yeah. Perfect, look forward to it. Um, uh, switching back to stage just for a sec, um, The Elephant Man uh, in 2014, you got a Tony nomination opposite uh, the great Bradley Cooper, and you were amazing. What's his name again? <laughs> I think the great comes before now, so the great yeah, Bradley Cooper. Yeah, no, he is, um, you know, he's just this rare man on earth. He, uh, he was extraordinary in that part. Every single performance we did it at Williamstown, we did it in New York. We moved, he brought every single New York member to London. We brought it to London. Mm. And every single night I saw his magic, his, um, he made me a better actor. He made me, I had, I really didn't want to go back to stage. I had done Blanche and suffered some stage fright. And he said, Patty, you're not going to, I trust me. I had to put my full trust in him, and I did. And I, um, but working with him made me a better actor. I could have touched on so many other films, you know, like Cairo <laughs> Time. Some, I mean, extraordinary oh, Cairo, work. Cairo Time ah, is Cairo so, Time is one of my very, very, very personal favorites of all time, because again, a little like my, it's so liquid and slow, and and Ruben not a great the great great Ruben who's directed me in a spy show that hopefully called Gray and I played Cornelia Gray and it's just this um it's it's yeah I worship Ruben and and but shooting in Cairo oh my god um I'd like to go back at some point but it's not quite very it's not very safe right now so yeah that's what they say anywho I will leave you with two final questions um oh goodness who were your acting heroes? Well, early on, Ingrid Bergman. Uh, early on, Ingrid Bergman and Lucille Ball. Wow. Wow. And I love them in equal part. And everybody thinks they're so disparate, but they're not. That They were both brilliant at where they lived. They were you know, Lucille Ball was so funny because she was so truthful. Yeah. And Ingrid Bergman was so was so beautiful because of her truth, because she really kind of reinvented acting in the moment in that generation. I don't know. Those were my two years. And then as I aged, there's so many, mm. you know. Well, those are two great choices. Uh, I love Ingrid Bergman myself. There's a great story about Sidney Lumet offering her a different role, the role that Wendy Hiller took in Murder on the Orient Express. Ingrid Bergman mm -hmm. read the script and said, no, I want to play the, the, the Swedish woman. And she won an Academy Award for it. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, final question. You've worked with so many different actors. Is there, are there one or two you haven't worked with that are on your wish list? Or three or four? <laughs> You know, I I would say there's directors, like would I lie down in moving traffic to work with Alfonso Caron? Yes. Mm. Um, um, I, I mean, there's, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. There's so many br brilliant actors out there right now. Um, so many I, I love. Um, uh, oh my God. And actresses, I mean, I want to work with Helen Mirren. I want to work with Jamie Lee Curley. You know, I want to work with these hot ladies. Um, you know, I want to I want to work with women of a certain age. I want to work, you know, and see what we can bring together. You know, yeah. women in their 60s, 70s, like 
just, you know, the fire that we can build, you know. Um, Michelle Yao, I want to work with these great, you know, all these women, these acclaimed women who are rising in our industry. I want to work with them. The young, there's brilliant young actresses, but I want to work with these older, like hot ladies. <laughs> <laughs> That I can't think of a better way to 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 wrap. Uh, okay. and, and as as a hot lady yourself, if I may uh, say, if I may say that. Oh please, please, please! Remember, I told you I wanted to marry you. That's, All right. <laughs> it's it's honestly been a privilege chatting with you. You've been such a delight, and please keep giving us these extraordinary, nuanced performances that you give us. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're a dreamboat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.